Well, good morning and welcome to another vlog um, here on the Hubnut YouTube channel. Uh, I thought today it might be interesting to just have a general chat about safety and risk. Um, this has been inspired by lots of discussion on the Delica about how risky it was to drive around in a vehicle that had subpar braking. And, you know, it really starts making you think, even with subpar brakes, the Delica probably stops better than quite a few cars in my collection. So, it makes you think, am, am, am I risking my life driving the Reliant Fox or the Invercar, which have all drum brakes? Of course, the Invercar only has three of them, and only one of those is on the front wheel. So its stopping power just can't be compared with a modern car. I think modern cars have now got such powerful brakes with the anti-lock braking system. There's even electronic um, brake forcing where it'll slam the anchors on. Some cars will even stop without any driver input whatsoever if they detect an accident is likely, which I find slightly terrifying because um, they don't always get it right. So I tend to give a, lo a larger berth um, more of a gap to a modern car because that's adding an element of unpredictability and you know humans themselves are unpredictable and that really is the crux of the matter when you look at the reasons why cars crash uh, I'm afraid um, I'm more of a danger than the brakes uh, it turns out uh, us humans are um, we think we're good drivers but we're not we make mistakes and um, sometimes with fatal results and uh, mechanical failures are actually fairly rare so you know I, i've um, certainly done my fair share of doom and glooming about the whole mot exemption for older cars i don't think it's a good idea i do think there will be safety implications but in the big scheme of the number of accidents it is a small risk um, but obviously that question is, is a, a really difficult one because different people will have different levels and I don't think it's right to force those levels on other people. If someone wants a big safe family car then so be it, that is their choice. Similarly, if someone wants to transport their kids in a Morris Minor or an Austin A35, that is their choice. And yes, arguably it is riskier because primarily because old cars are so hard so even a fairly low speed shunt in a classic car can be deeply unpleasant for the occupants. I say that, I, I've known people who have had absolutely horrific accidents in older cars and walked away from them so luck always plays its part. A friend of mine was traveling on the A23 in Brighton, big dual carriageway. A BMW came through the central reservation and smashed into her 2CV about here, right on the B post. Uh, her 2CV was thrown into a cartwheel and uh, just basically rolled itself to bits. Uh, I imagine it looked like the time Top Gear dragged the 2CV behind the Boeing 747. Uh, it was carnage. And when she just calmly stepped out of the wreckage, people just couldn't quite believe it. So um, yeah, sometimes your luck's in, sometimes your luck's not. People still die in modern cars, albeit, I, I was going to say the rate continues to drop, but it doesn't. Actually, it's plateaued. I don't know if that's because people are driving faster, um, people feel safe and cocooned in their modern cars. I mean, I don't want to have a crash. They sound like deeply unpleasant things to do. I haven't really had a bad one since I was 21, uh, involved getting it very wrong in a Subaru Impreza. Um, although Ellie has been in a smash, but that wasn't my fault someone drove into the back of me and smashed me into a truck uh, that wasn't much fun that was a long time ago um, so yeah I mean accidents are not pleasant I do not want to have one and I always drive with that in mind when I'm recording the videos I'm not looking at the camera now because I'm checking my mirrors and keeping an eye on the road uh, there's always an element of driving comes first when recording these videos which is why I sometimes stop talking because you know I'm busy and paying attention but yes now having children in my life, um, it does make me think a bit differently. I'm, I'm like, do I want to put them in the 2CV, which only has lap rear belts? Um, which doesn't seem a good idea, because all that's going to do is make them headbutt the seat in front. Um, but, you know, what do you do? I don't want to stop driving old cars. And uh, 
I think as long as their mother is happy to accept the slightly increased risk of driving an older car, then I'm ultimately happy. Uh, it would be a terrible shame if people just stop using old cars because they're scared of them. And that's not really ideal. Pretty town of Aberair on at the moment. Just off to um, say goodbye to the Toyota Tercel. But yeah, risk is, uh, it's a difficult one because um, some people will buy a car based on its performance in the NCAP ratings. I don't, I drive old cars. If I have a crash in this GSA, I don't think it's necessarily gonna look after me very well. These cars were developed rather stupidly looking back to um, have uh, a decent crash performance if slammed into a concrete wall completely square. What revolutionized car crashing and uh, car's ability to withstand it was the offset crash test. There's some very interesting videos um, on YouTube of offset crash tests with older vehicles and it's terrifying. I know people won't buy Rover Metros because they're so scared uh, that they might just disintegrate like a wet paper bag in a crash but I wonder if these people are happier to drive older cars that haven't been crash tested uh, and because they don't know how badly their car will fold up in an accident, they're happy with it. Or people drive around in old Range Rovers. Do you know, uh, Range Rover Classics are terrible in an offset crash situation. They're just not designed for it. And, uh, you know, Discoveries, even the Freelander 1 is pretty terrible in an offset smash. Uh, safety standards in the past sort of 20 odd years have come a very long way. cyclists to deal with. So yeah, it, when it comes to what's safe and what's unsafe in a car on the road, it's, it's a really difficult one. I certainly am not blasé about safety. I don't think to heck with it. Um, I, I try to make sure my cars are all up to scratch when it comes to braking. I try to replace pads before they're too badly worn. The Delica I've just been waiting to fit them because the pads are quite badly worn. Uh, but I guess in some ways I've been a bit spoiled because on um, two CVs, braking issues are so rare. I've had the rears pass an MOT even though they were almost entirely seized up, which just shows you how the MOT standard for braking is not particularly high. But two CV front brakes are very good. They use alloy pistons so they never corrode. Uh, they use LHM as well, which tends to make all the pipe work last a lot longer. Um, because it isn't hydroscopic, it doesn't absorb water like normal brake fluid does. So I guess I've been a bit spoiled, but I haven't had to really think about brakes other than tweaking up the handbrake every year on the 2CV. Um, it, it, it's okay, it always has been. Uh, whereas you, when you get into modern cars with the steel pistons and the caliper sliders, there's suddenly a lot to go wrong. And uh, I'm probably guilty of not maintaining brakes sufficiently I mean ideally every year you probably want to get the brakes apart and just make sure everything is free and nice and easy but you know humans are lazy aren't we we, we will do stuff when it needs doing and uh, I'm, I'm as guilty of that I'm as guilty of saying an oil change is a service when it isn't uh, so uh, yeah we, we could all do more I'm sure this bend this bend tightens it's properly nasty it's always accident damage either side of that bend it's very deceptive so yeah that, that, that was just some prattlings really about um, safety and uh, what what is safe what isn't assessing risk yeah we all do it and uh, you know I drive old cars but I don't drive old cars um, in a slow fashion I tend to go for it uh, I, I think I drive in a safe fashion, but I, I, probably times I'm driving too quickly um, for safety, really. Uh, he says doing just a touch over 60 uh, down that very big hill. But I think, you know, I am a very alert driver. Uh, I'm paying attention to stuff. Well, it does my head in, but I've got a slight ear issue going on at the moment so I can't hear as well as I normally can and I don't like that because I can't hear indicators very clearly I can't I'm not sure I can hear a police car 
coming up behind me as well as normal. This ear is still working fine. Um, but in terms of direction, trying to work out where a police car is coming from, I think I'd struggle. Uh, very irritating. Hopefully get that sorted out next week. Spend some time looking after myself rather than my cars. So yeah, safety, it, it is what it is. Um, everyone's got different standards of safety so I, I know why some people get upset and think that um, my standard of mechanicing is not up to scratch but yeah I will remind you I've never had an accident because of a mechanical failure um, I mean part of that is I know what to do when something goes wrong um, some people don't so if your engine stalls you have to bear in mind um, especially in a more modern car you're going to lose the brake servo so your braking is going to be much more difficult you might get one maybe two presses on the brake pedal and it's all stuff like this i guess i know how to brake down safely and um, not everyone does it's very tight through here having to pay attention because that's safe keep an eye on that cyclist i'm missing the great height of the delica that allows you to see over parked cars but yeah, I'm trying to wrap this one up and I'm still failing. So I'll just say uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, subscribe if you wish. Head to the Hubnut store for support options and uh, shop if you wish. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell.